What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of V4 Code Geass. Rosie, I have the recapture. Uh, this is episode uh, eight, and uh, with me, as always, I have Blue Spade. Mm. Um, I mean, I we forgot to mention this. Uh, what happened last week? It, it actually did happen at the end of the episode, but of course, it, it it's quite apparent that they're taking the fan service at such weird lengths. Um, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, of course, I already knew that that this scene was going to happen because uh the uh it's already out in japan so i already knew how how, how it was going to uh you know about this scene but i mean the, the we have to remember too like the original code geass did also have its fair share of fan service but at the same time the original code geass also had a, a pretty you know decent plot with good characters so i i think that the fan service sort of was mostly pretty excusable because it it still kind of balanced itself out with that. Uh, with this series, it doesn't really have that, so it's just I feel like the fan service is just a lot more noticeable. But it is it does also kind of feel like it's a little bit more in your face, like I guess literally and figuratively. I, um, I mean, it's just the way they, I don't know, the, the way they're holding Sakia like that. I mean, was it really even yeah, necessary? I mean, it doesn't really seem practical, but. I mean, obviously, it's if you think about it in terms of a fan service, there's there's definitely a reason for it. Um, but like, I mean, it, people were comparing that scene with, I guess, how Colin was restrained when she was captured in the original series, and I guess you know they were saying that was a little bit fan servicey, but it doesn't really compare to how it's but, but how for, it looks for, here. I for, think for for, Col for Colin, she was just sitting in a chair wearing a Britannian dress inside. I think cell. it was. It was some other scene where she was like wearing some uh, kind of like somewhat of a skimpy outfit, but I don't remember exactly what that was taken from. I just saw like the screenshot. Um, but yeah, for the most part, she was just you know, wearing like yeah the Britannian <laughs> outfit. Um, uh. But yeah, like uh, I don't know, like I, the episode in and of itself is just honestly just in my opinion just more nonsense like you know continued from the you know the last episode uh we have scissor man just being basically a, i mean we at least get his motivations in this episode which really just don't make any sense either um that apparently he's experimenting on people uh so that he can basically like according to him like i guess dissect them or cut them up so that he can somehow acquire gios that way which I mean, that's not really how Geass works. So I don't know how that would be how he would get it like that. I mean, but the, th the thing is, like, where did he get the knowledge of Geass in the first place? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, there, there's a lot of questions with that as well. Um, and then apparently, I guess, I guess Norland, that's part of his plan too, because he does show up at one point, and he basically was, you know, at trying to, I guess, get Sakia to tell him how he can acquire Geass. Uh, and they try to get, I, I guess, you know, they try to force her to tell them through, like, using these, uh, I guess, these captured Japanese prisoners. And I'm not exactly sure how this device they were wearing works. Like, they're wearing these devices around their necks. And I thought it was some kind of explosive collar. Um, I don't know if it's, like, some kind of a, uh, some sort of, like, a guillotine sort of thing where their heads get cut off. Or if it, because it's not really clear how they die. They just... I guess they just bleed out from their neck and they die. Yeah, it, I'm pretty sure there's like the, it, the, that collar just slits their throats. I guess so. Yeah, it's not really it's not really clear, um, but yeah. So, um, so so yeah. Like like I said in this episode, of course, like continuing on from the last one, Sakuya gets captured and she's strung up like you know how a lot of people have been pointing out on the internet, uh, and she's questioned by a scissor man about about Gias and um and then meanwhile there's a fight taking place between the uh the Japanese resistance group and um the the neo Britannians uh which they're I guess they're losing pretty bad. It's I, I feel like that's another problem I have with this series is that the fights just there there really doesn't feel like there's a lot of strategy to the fights as opposed to how it was in the original series where there was a clear strategy, there was a clear battle plan. Here, it's it's just not really clear exactly what the plan is. And, I mean, like, I, I wasn't even really clear on who was commanding them until they show them later in the episode. Um, because I, I was just, I don't know. I just have a lot of questions about that. Like, how exactly are they, uh, um, are they strategized? Or, you know, like, what exactly is their plans for how they're 
you know, trying to handle the Neo Britannians. It's, I mean, it just seems like the the only strategy they have is just charge in and hope for the best. That that kind of seems like mostly what they've been doing. I, I mean, with Sakia being captured, like you know, she she's like the only person who has, I guess, I guess she she's more knowledge, knowledgeable about like how to uh, concoct a good strategy during, you know, during the. <laughs> I haven't really seen her do that much of that, though. I mean, not not like Lelouch, where they really were reliant on him to come up with a, a battle plan or, like, a strategy. Uh, Rosé doesn't really seem to be doing that quite as much. I mean, she she did handle herself well during the whole Damocles thing in the, in the last couple few episodes. But, I mean, that, that... I mean, in terms of, like, you know, for, like, who's the best strategist, you know, in the Resistance... Um, Right now, it it would be it would be Rose slash Sakia because like they, they relied on her a lot on a lot more than like in a how, I mean how I guess compared to these other characters she would be yeah I mean the the episode does have a couple highlights uh, in terms of its fight scenes um, we were wondering who who this like you know this white haired guy was and we oh yeah find that's out another that thing <laughs> I was like who is this guy again he just shows up and. Uh, you know, and I, I, I forgot. I completely forgot about his character. I think he showed up earlier. Yeah. Um, so I, I completely it, forgot about him to be honest. Yeah, he, he was that character that um, Ash apparently killed. I think it was on the second. Oh episode. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then they brought him now. back as some kind of cyborg, similar to how they did to Jeremiah. Was he the guy that? Uh, I, I think he was in that scene. One of the scenes with Scissor Man. Uh, yeah. Where, yeah. He, okay. He is. And what's also interesting that Arnold has a Gios canceller. Yeah, I, I guess he has one just implanted in him. I, I guess you can do that now. Yeah, and uh, during the fight, um, Ar- Arnold uh, uses that to his advantage to get rid of the Gios that was controlling uh, Ash, thinking that, um, you know, Akia is Rose. But of course, now that that's gone, um, well, pretty much uh, Ash is back, back to his normal self, but he's. But as as a result of him losing that, uh, uh, you know, the Gios, he was under control, and like he still he remembers uh, his memories of his you know his original brother getting killed by Norland. Yeah, um, and then he also, uh, yeah, he go he also goes to find Sakia. Yeah, and then of course I think another um, another major battle that happened in this episode is I think uh, one of the. Britannia Knights, Catherine uh, going up against uh, the Resistance members, Haruka. It it wasn't it was an okay fight. I mean, it's I, I uh, mean it's a lot different than what you, what you would normally see you know, in the original series, which was like two. Yeah, I just drawn, but all it's like a lot of these nightmare fights are all CG now. Yeah, that's that's another thing that really I feel like just kind of takes you out of it. You're just not really as immersed as you would be if you were watching the original, and you know you just had hand drawn mechs fighting each other. Here, it's just kind of you know, all CG Max. Uh, yeah, and what's it? What I mean, what also made it different is the CG allows like certain characters to physically taunt like other characters. Like Catherine, like just like all, like did you know has that nightmare? Like did the shaking of the hip, hips to taunt Haruka? You know, uh, just make her like. Yeah, I, don't know, I, I mean, I just feel like it just comes off as silly, but yeah, I guess so. Um, uh. Yeah, and then of course, like I, I didn't even know about like I, I don't know, Haruka. I guess has this this ability that um, it, did she? I guess she can enhance the fi- her fists or something like that. And like she, she uses like uh, what was it? Those like it, it's it's one of those like generator shields that's similar to Suzaku's uh, wings that she uses. Yeah. That, like apparently she uses it as like like enhanced boxing gloves of sorts, and she she does get like somewhat of an upper hand against Catherine before it gets uh, turned around on her soon afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and, and of course, um, <laughs> basically, we uh, we also go back to uh, Ash trying to get into that, I guess. Um, I forget exactly, like, uh, how does he find out where Saki is being held exactly? No. Uh, so, I guess the Resistance got this information from some like random Britannian scientist, he's that. A, now oh. we saw this guy earlier before, but we don't really get to see all of him much. So he was the one who who sent that information to Ash to find uh, Sakia in the prison that she was being held at. Mm. Uh, 
I don't know why. Maybe it's just to lure, lure Ash there so he can get captured, but it doesn't look like that's the case. So, I, I mean, we yeah, will find out. Yeah, because, of course, Ash just completely, like, outmaneuvers every uh, of the grunt, all the grunt mechs and, you know, gets easily gets to where Saki is being held and confronts, uh, uh, confronts Scissor Man. Yeah, and even Scissor Man is taken by surprise as to how Ash is able to penetrate the the prison. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we do get a fight scene between Scissor Man and Ash, which Ash is able to get the upper hand and is able to destroy his nightmare. But of course, Scissor Man is able to somehow escape before his um, before his nightmare gets impaled. Yeah, um, and and then uh, you know that Ash ends up uh, coming to free Sakia. And Sakia, you know, realizes that he's broken the Gios and that he knows everything now. Um, and she says, like, you know, she, of course, like, she'd understand if she, if uh, he feels betrayed or if he's, you know, if he wants to kill her, but asks him to wait till they've, she's uh, rescued her sister or, or, well, not her sister, but, you know, her, uh, her double, I guess. Um, yeah. Sakura. But, yeah. Before uh, he ends up killing her. And it just kind of ends off on that cliffhanger. Um, well, actually, before before that too, we go we do go back to that fight with the uh, um, the Japanese and the Neo Britannians. Um, I guess things are looking pretty bad for the Japanese. They're getting overwhelmed. And then this, I forget who the. I, that's another thing too. I don't even remember who this guy is. I guess he did show up before, but he's just such a minor character. I completely forgot who he is. This is like old man shows up, and I guess he's brought some reinforcements with him. Um, and I, <laughs> I, their whole strategy seems to that to be that uh, they're going to, I guess, essentially kamikaze themselves. Like they're going to use these, they have these um, explosives, and they just jump into the middle of all these uh, Neo Britannian units and blow themselves up. And I guess they're just going to con- use just blow all of themselves up just so they can, I guess, give uh, the Japanese resistance a chance to uh, to escape. Um, I, I guess that's that was I mean, the plan. It, it worked, but yeah. you know they they lost a lot of uh, people in the process. So the yeah, so the Japanese, so the, the resistance group uh, is able to escape soon afterwards uh, after this. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, both Arnold and Catherine end up getting away from the battle before they're caught up on it. Yeah, um, but yeah, of course the episode, like I said, the episode does end on the cliffhanger of uh, Ash holding Sakia at gunpoint. Um, I, uh, I'm just gonna say it, like, I, I don't even know whether this is the case or not, but I, he's not gonna do it, like, he's not gonna kill her, um, it wouldn't make any sense if he did, I, I, th- you know, he was already, like, I mean, we, we already know what his real, like, you know, that he was going to try to protect her anyway before she asked him, uh, so, I mean, it re- really wouldn't make any sense if he did, uh, he's not gonna do it. I mean, I, I know they're trying to, they, they leave it off on this, like, cliffhanger, like, oh, is he going to do it? He, he's not going to do it. Uh, like, I feel like that that's the other problem I have with this series is that, I mean, considering a lot of it just feels like a rehash of the original series, a lot of it just becomes so predictable. Uh, you know, we, we know Ash isn't going to kill her. Um, and I, the other problem, of course, is that there there's no, we still have no real motivation for, you know, some of the villains, like, um, like Norlin, for instance, like, I mean, I guess we got a little bit of, of that in this episode, but it doesn't really make sense, um, especially considering what we know about Gia, how Gios is supposed to work. Um, it seems like they they really are kind of misinformed about the way Gios even works. Uh, you can't really, like, like, trans, like, forcibly, like, transfer Gios to yourself, like, by doing these, like, scientific experiments or whatever they're trying to do. I mean, well, but... here's my problem with this show is that what infuriates me about this is like how poor the marketing was for this show um mm-hmm. like not not only just that like just um being on disney plus disney plus has had a horrendous job of trying or or lack of like of promoting all of their new like anime series on their on their streaming site like they, they yeah. did the same thing for bleach thousand year blood war I think they did the same thing for Summertime Rendering, and now they're doing the exact same thing for Code Geass. Well, it's a shame about some like shows like Summertime Rendering because I feel yeah. like they flew under the radar because Disney didn't really do a lot to, to uh, promote the series. Uh, and also because of the way the series was released, because the series, I think, all of the episodes came out in Japan before they even were released on Disney+, Plus and, or, or Disney+, Plus and Hulu, I guess, uh, which didn't happen until like much later. 
Um, so by that time, like anybody who was interested in the series has already watched it. Um, and uh, they, I don't really even think they did a lot to promote the series when they did release it on Hulu. I, no. I, I kind of found that out sort of by accident that it came out uh, on Hulu. And I mean, well, the only exception is, of course, Bleach, which thankfully it is being released like um, the day of the episode coming out in Japan. But it, but like I said, it's the marketing even before this the the first the first episode came out for the new series is no there barely any like promotion came out for that show until like mostly just fan you know like just like just may, maybe just like you know the the base fa- uh, fan fan following just like is aware is aware of it but of course nobody not a lot of other people knew that it was coming out on Disney Plus and Hulu yeah um yeah but I mean, th- this new Code Geass series, though, I mean, I-, I feel like the difference is with this, like, people, th- they're not really missing much from, you know, based on everything I've seen so far if, by not watching this series. Um, you know, it's, uh, of course, it's just a continuation from the the, the resurrection timeline, um, but it's, it, it just feels, it, it doesn't really feel like a Code Geass series to me. Uh, it feels like it's it's kind of just, you know, like I mentioned, just sort of rehashing some of the same, the same plot points from the original series, but not really understanding like why those, why they worked, um, and you know, just the, all the new characters they've introduced have just been kind of. I mean, m- my main issue too with all the Neo Britannians is that they're they're just very they're very bland one dimensional villains that that are just basically just evil as it seems like just for the sake of it. Um, I mean, there were v- characters like that in the original Code Geass, but a lot of them were, like, throwaway villains that weren't really important or, like, major villains. Uh, a lot of, the, like, the major villains in the series were, like, developed pretty well and had, you know, you could understand where they're coming from even if you don't agree with them. Uh, they were sympathetic to an extent. Uh, but none. I can't say that about any of the, uh, the Rosé of the recapture villains. Uh, I think there are they're just they're all just kind of almost like you know comedic and the and how like evil they come off you know they're just kind of they, they just do just terrible things like you know i mean you're obviously you're not supposed to like them but they're just they're just bad characters in general like yeah and we, we still don't have much of a reason as to why a neo britannian like neo britannia formed and took over you know the entirety of hokkaido in the first place What's also yeah. really stupid is, um, you know, for people uh, who've watched the the movies in Japan, got the got a backstory by reading a fucking pamphlet that they get. Yeah, like, when yeah, I have brought it. this up before. That's basically how they decided to sort of uh, explain what's hap- some at least some of what's happening, I guess, in the series is by handing out pamphlets that explain this, I guess, the state of the world um, instead of having actually having that in the series. Yeah, but for people that's watching it in the United States, like us, like we don't have yeah. that information. Like, yeah, what, yeah. What are, <laughs> how are we supposed to? Yeah, like how are we supposed to know any of that? Um, so, I mean, that that's another problem. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't know. I'm, it, I I I wasn't really like. I mean, I guess you could say there were some okayish things about the episode, but for the most part, I was. I I don't know. Like like I mentioned before, I'm very much checked out of the series at this point. I'm, I mean, I I am curious as to I guess what they're going to uh, where they're going to go with like the plot and some of the um, like some of the the new the Neo Britannians, I guess. But a lot of it, if you think about them, just kind of the, the fact that they're sort of just copying stuff from the original, it, it just becomes kind of obvious where they'll probably go with it. Um, I one thing that I guess we we kind of neglected to mention is that there is a scene of a very brief scene with like, I guess, I guess a Britannian scientist. He's, it seems like he's working on another, another weapon that, that might, I guess, be the replacement for the Damocles that they lost earlier in the series. Uh, but we don't know what it is like it. Yeah. Yeah. They're very vague on this, unfortunately. And with it being like a, a 12 episode series, it's not, I don't know if it's going to be, as well developed as like how the Damocles was. It looks like it might be some kind of a bomb, I guess, but I don't know. Um, I mean, it, it could be something related to the whole Geos order thing. Like, um, like 
like how Charles like had had this plan to kill God and or something like that or or, or whatever it is. All the Ragnarok like, plan. Yeah, the whole rag, the, ra, the Ragnarok plan. Maybe it's similar to that. I oh man, I really hope they don't get into that because uh, that, I mean that was kind of I, I guess that was one of the sort of more ridiculous things in the original series. I mean, if, if they try to do that in Rose, I mean, I I don't <laughs> I don't know how they're gonna how they're gonna handle that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it would be interesting if they went that direction. They tried to do, you know, their own version, I guess, of the Ragnar uh, Ragnarok plan. Um, but, yeah, uh, I, I don't really have too much else to say about the episode, though. Um, I don't know if you have anything else to say about it. Yeah, I mean, if if we remember that uh, the people who've, who've worked on Code Geass say that they, they have, like, a 10-year plan for this series, but... I mean, it, it's funny because it doesn't seem like they really had much of a plan for this series in the first place. It just doesn't seem like it was that well thought out, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I mean, like the first, the first of the stories is, is of course, you know, Lelouch of the Resurrection, which we got a few years ago, and yeah. of course, this is of course the next step of that story. But what, I mean, where where are they taking? This is oh, it's another thing. People also it, it also just has out. a very loose connection to to Lelouch and the other, the original characters anyway. Um, it's kind of its own thing. Yeah, I think they said the reason why, I don't know, it's a, it says, they said that they couldn't continue the story without having Lelouch there. But you're releasing a series where Lelouch is not even being fully involved at all in the first place. Yeah. So, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It's like, uh, if... Like you have you have Lelouch in the show, but he proclaims that he he give he does give Gios the, the, to Sakia, which is the only extent which he's involved in. But then he can't really be involved any further than this unless he makes some, some kind of other appearance by the end of the show. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he did. I'm sure he'll he probably they'll probably have Lelouch have another cameo before the show's over. Maybe, um, but I don't know. We'll have to see what's going to happen in the next five episodes. Yeah. Yeah, guys, uh, but that all being said, until next time, we will see you all later.